Hello and welcome back my friends. Today we're going to be talking all about diatomaceous earth. I'm going to share with you everything there is you need to know before you get started using this amazing product in and around your home and in the garden as a means of pest control. Amongst other things, there's many different uses for diatomaceous earth. So yesterday I shared with you a video showing you a great way to distribute this product throughout the garden and around the home to deal with some common pests. It's very effective for things like ants, aphids, fleas, cockroaches, but there's a whole host of different insects that can be a nuisance that this can be helpful for. And there was quite a few different comments that came through, questions as well. And I want to try to address all of those in today's video. If you happen to miss that video, by the way, be sure to check this link above my head or in the description box down below. I'll leave a link to the video sharing with you how I like to use this in my garden as an organic means of pest control. All right, so the first thing I wanted to address was water and how that affects diatomaceous earth. So water is going to render diatomaceous earth ineffective as long as it's wet. But once it dries back out, it becomes effective once again. So actually there's a common way of applying diatomaceous earth in hard to get spots by adding it to a spray bottle with water and spraying those areas. And like I said, once it dries back out, you're left with the diatomaceous earth that becomes effective again. Also, it's a good idea to actually wet your plants down or wait till early in the morning when you still got morning dew on the plants to dust your plants with the diatomaceous earth. It's just going to allow the product to stick better to the plants that you're treating so water is not an issue however if you are doing a heavy sprinkling or you know soaking your plants then there's a good chance a lot of that product is going to seep into the soil which by the way is beneficial as well it actually contributes to overall soil health and water retention mainly in sandy and loamy soils it can actually help to retain moisture so it's not a bad thing to enter into your soil profile as well but it's not an issue where you get the product wet once and it becomes totally ineffective so i just wanted to dispel that rumor that myth uh, just know that when it is wet it's not effective and when it dries back out it becomes effective once again now let's talk food grade diatomaceous earth versus industrial grade there is a big difference obviously with the food grade diatomaceous earth this is going to be acceptable for consumption human consumption mammal consumption so i actually take diatomaceous earth in my smoothies i put usually about a teaspoon in my smoothies and it has benefits that can help with the skin the nail the hair uh, amongst other things so you may want to look into that primarily what uh, we're looking for in the diatomaceous earth is the silica now the diatoms are primarily silica diatoms are what diatomaceous earth actually is it's the fossilized remains of algae so it can be beneficial to take internally of course you would never want to use industrial grade to take internally and the main difference between the two is the industrial grade diatomaceous earth is usually heat treated and that creates the little tiny tiny shards if you looked under a microscope at the diatomaceous earth it would almost look like shards of glass so what that does is harden that and the reason they do that is mainly for filtration and things like pool filters and such they will harden the, the diatomaceous earth before they put it into the filter it's more effective that way but the handling of the industrial product is not done in a food safe manner as well so take that into consideration i recommend always using food grade diatomaceous earth you could have other chemical inputs that are also making it into the industrial uh, diatomaceous earth as well so stick with food grade play it safe and you'll have many many uses that you can use it for unless of course you're using it for some sort of a filtration uh, service for your pool or something like that then you'd go with the industrial. So how about its effect on worms and is it safe to use in let's say a worm bin? Well, worms have a slimy mucus-like outer layer on their body and they also tend to stay below the soil surface or just below where it's nice and moist. So worms are not gonna be affected by diatomaceous earth. It's safe to use in a worm bin. Uh, you can just dust the top of your bin if you're having a problem with fungus gnats or some of these other parasites or larvae that may be infiltrating your bin that you wanna get rid of. Uh, diatomaceous earth can be very effective and in fact the worms will even eat the diatomaceous earth uh, so it's not going to hurt your worms it's not going to hurt the earthworms out in your garden so don't worry about that all right so what about the bees is this going to harm the bees when you apply this product on your plants well the bees aren't going to like coming in contact with diatomaceous earth but studies have shown that 
more than likely the bees are not negatively impacted by diatomaceous earth because of the fact that they have these little furry hairs all over their body which help protect them. The same hairs that gather the pollen when they go from flower to flower and help them to spread and cross pollinate your plants also protects the bee from substances like diatomaceous earth. Now with that being said, you obviously don't want to dust all around an area where you see bees flying around. You want to take it into consideration and be considerate of some of those beneficials. Ladybugs would be another one where if you see their presence, you may not want to go the route of diatomaceous earth, but don't be overly concerned that you're going to be hurting all these beneficial insects by applying the DE in your garden. Same goes for wasps. Uh, some wasps like paper wasps are extremely beneficial for the garden. You really don't have to worry about them suffering any severe consequences from using DE. Now is diatomaceous a cruel way to deal with insects? Is it causing suffering and pain to the insect? Uh, my understanding is no and from what I've observed also I'm going to say a resounding no and that's because the way diatomaceous earth works is it really uh, dehydrates the insect with an exoskeleton and it does that by absorbing up the fats, the lipids, the oils that are on the outside of the insect's body. And it does create little microscopic uh, lacerations on the insect's body as well, which just expedite the process. But these aren't deep cut wounds that are causing suffering in the insect. They're just very microscopic little slits. And so uh, I wouldn't worry about that too much. You can observe and interact with nature yourself and see what kind of results you're getting. But when it comes to pest control, you know, there's really no way that you're going to look at this and say, oh, that was a great feeling and I'm happy I, I was able to kill some insects. You know, it's just, especially if you're in tune with nature, we're trying to avoid that. We're always trying to create a balance. And a lot of times when you have an influx or an out of balance situation regarding pests and insects, there are ways that you can overcome that naturally. Polyculture gardens is a great way where you can have natural predators come in and take care of some of these pesty in insects. But I just want to remind you guys, uh, especially the folks that are more sensitive out there, and I'm very uh, you know, appreciative of people that have this level of love in their heart for all living beings, because I myself too also care a lot about all the different living beings. But you know, some things just need to be said, like if you're outside and a mosquito lands on your arm, most people are going to smack that mosquito. They just don't want the chance to contact uh, some sort of a virus or illness from the mosquito. They don't want to get bit up by mosquitoes. They're going to give that a smack. Also, house flies flying around in your house. Most people are going to swat and get rid of the house fly as well. So just be aware that some of these insects that are in abundance and usually are part of an imbalanced situation, we need to come in as part of nature and help remedy some of these situations to bring balance back in. And so the best way we can do that is to observe and interact and figure out nice ways that we can create a more balanced ecosystem without the use of these products. But when these issues do arise, don't be afraid to take care of them. At least that's my understanding. That's the way that I deal with it. So hopefully you can get something from that. So let's go through a quick list of some of the different pests that diatomaceous earth can treat other than the few that I touched on yesterday. Um, things like ants and aphids, cockroaches, uh, ticks, bed bugs, slugs, snails, larvae, uh, different parasites, fungus gnats. There's really a lot of different applications and ways to use this product. So it's a great resource to have on hand as a gardener. Again, be careful of the beneficial insects when you are using the product but for the most part the bees the wasps and uh, the worms aren't affected by the product so uh, don't worry about that too much butterflies on the other hand uh, could be detrimental but generally the butterflies are going to land on flower to flower and you shouldn't be dusting the flowers themselves all that much but more the leaves the underside of the leaves and around the base of plants so i wouldn't worry too much about that so what about breathing in the diatomaceous earth you definitely don't want to breathe it in as you don't want to breathe in any type of dust particulate. So if you're applying on a windy day, which I don't recommend, uh, you're going to want to wear a mask. Otherwise, just direct it towards an area where it's not blowing back in your face. Also, if you're applying it on your pets, because this can make a, a really good treatment for fleas and other pests that may be inhabiting your pets, your dogs, your cats, your chickens, which I've used it on both my dogs and, and chickens. I don't have any cats, but 
Um, when you're applying it, just make sure that they're not breathing in the dust as you're putting it on. And just be aware that, like with a dog, it may shake off all that DE, all the excess stuff, and create a plume of dust. And so that would be the only time where a dog or a chicken, when they shake it off, could potentially breathe some of it in. But uh, I just haven't had any issues with that. My pets are healthy. I find it to be a great treatment for things like fleas. So just keep it in mind. You don't want to breathe it in. You don't want to breathe in any type of dust particulate. Wear a mask and protect your pets when applying it. And that's something I hit two things in this topic here is that uh, it's also a great treatment for some of your animals. So again, just if you're applying it to your pets, be careful that they're not breathing it in as well. So that about does it. I think I've touched on all the different topics that I wanted to talk about today. Hopefully that gives you a well-rounded understanding of diatomaceous earth. Uh, once again, check out my other video if you didn't see it yesterday, but it's just a great way to control insects in your garden, a great way to control uh, some of the nuisance pests that come into your house, ants, cockroaches, fleas, that sort of thing, bed bugs. So anyway, I'll just show you one more time. This is the duster that I use to apply diatomaceous earth. And like I said, you can go up to your plants. It's best to do this in the morning when there's still morning dew or after you've done a watering and there's a little moisture on your plants. I'm just gonna give a dust like that. Now, when it comes time to eat your edible vegetables or fruits, then you can simply rinse it off. This stuff just rinses right off and any of the DE that hits the ground, again, is gonna to add to the soil profile. It's not gonna harm anything like the worms. So don't worry too much about that. And so with that, we're gonna wrap this video up. I sure hope this video was helpful or entertaining to you in some way. If so, be sure to smash the likes. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel. New uploads every week, sometimes every day, and I'm always giving you updates on all the things growing on around here. So with that, have yourself a good one. Until next time, this is Dan from PlantAbundance.com. Take care, I'll be talking to you again soon.